This is the video of my presentation with title Head Injury Risk Assessment Considering Real Statistical Distribution of Sheet Metal Thickness and Material Properties. My name is Andres Salvador Garcia Granada and I'm working with Horatio Rosto Gonzalez and the Head of the Department of Industrial Engineering at IQS Barcelona. So my presentation and uh, the contents of my presentation I will present myself then I will talk about safety factors in engineering I will talk about automotive regulations then I will focus on head impact for pedestrian protection. I will talk about the head calibration. Then I will discuss about experimental approach and statistics and quality inspection for all parts for automotive uh, components. And then I will focus on the case study of this paper where we do a multiple optimization and risk assessment. So I will end up reading my conclusions. First of all, myself, um, industrial engineer at UPC Barcelona. I went to Bristol working with Vector Industry Services for British Energy. Then I did my PhD in Bristol for British Aerospace and Supersonic Aircraft. I've been working since 1996 uh, with finite element uh, simulations and experimental validation. Then I moved to engineering company EDAC working for several uh, automotive uh, companies, uh, developing, for example, Peugeot 206. Then I moved to SEAT, the car company here in Barcelona, and I was responsible for the material database for simulation and the simulation of interior parts, including uh, head impact on the interior for American legislation. Then I moved to Audi and Ingolstadt, where I was working also on head impact of the interior of the car. Since 2007, I've been working at uh, IQS, teaching CATIA, SOLIDWORKS, ANSYS, SE, CRASH, uh, with current position of head of department, uh, head of research group. So IQS, IGP is the research group. Uh, these are my colleagues. And here you can see Horacio, who is also uh, participating in this paper. <coughs> so, what do we do engineers? We work with safety factors to minimize the risk of failure. Okay, so for example, for T, we have everything very well documented. We have a corrosive environment, surface condition, size factors, motor bloating, temperatures, reliability, notch effects, fretting conditions, and altogether is reducing our uh, possibilities of design. For example, for surface, depending on the quality of the park, whether it's hot row, machine, or fine ground, we have different uh, factors that are affecting our uh, fatigue calculation. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what happens with crash? If we do design something that is too stiff, then we will have very high acceler decelerations or a head injury criteria. But if we do something too weak, then we will not decrease the impact velocity and we also will have a large decelerations and large head injury cuties. There is a possibility to find an optimal value or optimal uh, stiffness where we can meet uh, some requirements. But do we have statistics for this point? Is this point uh, just a concrete value that we can repeat? Okay, let's focus on <laughs> regulations that we have here. We have uh, many regulations to meet. For example, we can look for uh, frontal impact and we have different countries in each country different legislations and for example if we focus in the two, 208 we have different velocities in America or in Europe, dummies and things that we are checking. Let's concentrate on something a bit more simple which would be how to help pedestrian impact. Okay, current legislation we have Euro cap, GN cap that where we publish our results and some legal requirements that instead of 40 kilometers per hour work with 35 kilometers per hour okay which are compulsory to meet okay so there are publications but these publications for example they say we have a case study and then we include a form of two millimeter five millimeters 15 millimeters 25 millimeters and we decrease HIC head injury criteria these publications are always talking about things that are very green, uh, very well below this 1000 uh, HIC height injury criteria. This is, for example, one publication I can before. Okay, uh, they don't talk about repetition of experiments. 
What about head calibration itself? We have to calibrate the head uh, by dropping from a height of 376 millimeters and we have to look at the pixel acceleration that should be between 225 and 275 g. This is the drop test for the calibration. Well, the acceleration should be unimodal, something like that. Okay, this is okay. It's between 225 and 275. Please note that this is a plus minus 10%. Okay, and there is a large scatter even in the calibration of the head. Okay, so what is the influence on the head injury criteria? So here we have a reason for having scatter in our head injury criteria of values. What happens if we do experimental approach? In my time at SEAT, Audi uh, did many uh, experiments and just one simulation. So we have the simulation in red on three experiments, okay? And they had large scatter. Another simulation in red, three experiments. Another simulation in red. Here we did four different experiments. Another simulation in red, another four different experiments. So our purpose is, I would say, because what happens one if we have one experiment like let's say this cyan that does not meet the requirement and there are two experiments that they meet the requirements we need to understand the statistics of these experimental values whether it comes from the head it comes from the part that we're impacting it comes from a fracture that we're not expecting or where do they come from so let's link it to quality inspection in automotive materials they are inspected by our quality department and for example it's well documented the gel stress allowance so if we consider this six sigma criterion plus minus three uh, sigma this means a 0.27 percent of reject okay for the people that are not familiar with the statistics this is the uh, normal distribution okay if we consider plus minus two sigma we are rejecting four point uh, 56 percent of the parts okay so we can buy a cheap material the uh, x51 with gel stress average uh, 0.24 gigapascal with a 13.9 percent uh, deviation okay in normal distribution we can go to a more expensive one so dx52 dx53 dx54 dx50 six okay which has an average of 0 0.17 with only a 5.9 percent uh, uh, normal distribution obviously for most of the people in the company they don't care if gel stress is 300 uh, 0 0.34 gigapascal well because it's too steep but that's okay because they are only checking whether the part breaks or not but for the people in crash we insist this deviation is crucial to understand because it could be too hard for us mm -hmm. so we can do the same for sheet uh, metal thickness okay where we can check our population the normal distributions and it's easy to check what are our uh, uh, sheet metal whether they meet the, our requirements or not okay let's focus on our case study we have here a multiple optimization and risk to evaluate okay so we're check using an old adult head of 4.8 kilograms okay so currently all the uh, impacts are made with a 4.5 kilogram and we are doing the impact at 35 kilometers per hour so this means we are having here 226.8 joules involved in energy if we make an assumption of a constant deceleration we can check here what is the minimum displacement that we have as function of constant acceleration the impact time on the, the head injury criteria okay so in order to have a 800 uh, uh, head injury criteria we will need an acceleration of 80 something uh, g's okay so that's what i wrote here in order to obtain a below 1000 uh, HAC we need 100 G and 49 millimeters but to obtain HAC head injury criteria below 800 we we'll need 87 G and 56 millimeters this is considering uh, that we are able to do a constant acceleration this is very difficult to achieve okay so let's do uh, finite element simulations we can play with the thickness 
this is the nominal values that we will include some scatter on top of them. We can do 0 0.5, 1 1.0, 1 1.5. It's not uh, realistic to use 1.13 millimeters as the nominal value. Okay, this is the values that we can buy. <coughs> also for geostress, let's assume a family where we can have 0 0.2, 0 0.4. 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.0, and 1.2 gigapascal, so 6 right now. So 5 times 6, so 30, 30 deterministic simulations. With this, we can do the simulations by having 70 millimeters, 80, 90, or 100 millimeters. That's much more than the theoretical 60 millimeters. Okay? This could be our model where we have the head that is impacting our component. It's not a real car for uh, confidentiality with our partners, okay? And this is similar to impacting a bonnet where we have this uh, sheet metal uh, reinforcement that impact the motor and deform to decelerate the head. So, <clears throat> what happens if we have something that is very weak? It's not stopping the head and we're gonna hit the bottom part where we have the motor uh -huh, or the engine of our car. And then we have a very large uh, HIC. What happens if we do something very stiff here for 1.5 millimeters? Okay, then we have our large deceleration at the beginning and also a very large HIC. Can we find an optimum? Yes, we can have a, a value of 336 uh, HIC. We are very happy, very well below uh, 1000. Okay, but once again, this is a deterministic simulation. Okay. So, are we safe? This is our question. Why will it happen if tomorrow we come with a plate that is a bit thicker, a bit stiffer? Mm -hmm. So, we're gonna carry out all these simulations uh, for 70, 80, 90, and 100. Or so. so, it's four times 30, 120 simulations. And we can check here on the top that we can meet a value which is green, 700 HAC, but we already see that if the thickness is smaller or even bigger or uh, the gel stress okay we are moving to red values but obviously we have to study our variation in between whether we're gonna stay green with 80 millimeters exactly the same 90 and 100 millimeters here we have some green <laughs> neighbors already so it doesn't really matter whether we go a bit uh, stiffer in gel stress but what happens when you go to the sides so which one do you choose eh? will you go for the one that with a minimum space to save space will you require the 100 millimeters so we are going to carry out Monte Carlo simulations for all combination of thickness and gel, uh, gel stress with our statistics and here we have so this uh, sort of cross is with a uh, 70 millimeters, 80 millimeters, 90 millimeters, and finally the dots are the 100 millimeters. In all cases, we have some points that are even above the 1000. So we have here the 800, the 1000 uh, limit. Okay, so for all of them, we have we can plot eh, this as a function of gel stress or a function of thickness, or we can plot together and having the size of our impact point. Okay. At value of HAC and the color so red is below above 1000 green is below 800 and orange is between 800 and 1000 so here we have with uh, 70 millimeters many points that are red okay the number of red points are decreasing with the space also do we accept this 43 percent of points that are red with 70 millimeters or this 19 percent that are red with 100 millimeters. Do we ask for a tolerance reduction? So instead of having this tolerance, can we move here to this smaller tolerance? This has an impact in price. So let's study this. Okay, this is will be the nominal value where we do the deterministic, the minimum, the maximum, the average, and the normal distribution for these 100 simulations with 70, 80, 90, and 100, and 100 millimeters. Okay, but Let's focus on that. If we reduce the tolerances, we have some red points. So I think with 70 millimeters, it's not safe. 
if we move to 80 millimeters, we have all points in green, orange, the same thing that with 90 millimeters. And if we go for 100 millimeters, all points are green, all points are below 800. Okay, so that would be our suggestion. Huh? Please use this 100 millimeters to minimize and reduce the tolerances. Okay, to focus on a new design point to be here in the middle. Okay reducing the tolerances so in conclusion we have demonstrated the possibility of designing a deformation element that can decelerate an adult head of mass 4.8 kilos traveling at 35 kilometers per hour which is the law okay to obtain heat below 1000 okay even below 800 we need for this more than 50 millimeters we can do deterministic uh, simulations Finding that for 70 millimeters we can obtain a value of 739, which is green, and reducing that when we use 100 millimeters to 336. But we think we need to do the statistics for these 100 simulations, considering deviations in thickness and in geostress, stress, having 43% of points that do not meet the requirements for 70 millimeters and 19% for 90 and 100 millimeters. However, if we reduce the tolerances from plus minus 0 0.1 to plus minus 0 0.033 millimeters, and in geostress stress from 0 0.05 gigapascal to 0 0.025 gigapascal, we can achieve all points in green for 100 millimeters space deformation and green orange for 80 and 90 millimeters. This this study is not safe for 70 millimeters space as we have breakpoints even within these uh, expensive tolerances. So, this study emphasized the importance of risk analysis in determining the appropriate tolerances for deformation elements. But this has an input on price. Performing just one experiment that provides an acceptable value of HAC is not a guarantee that we meet the requirements for each possible combination of thickness and geostress that is not rejected by our quality. So, this methodology provides valuable insight into the design of deformation elements for mitigating head injuries in vehicle accidents. Thank you for your attention.